Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back. It's Friday. And I've been MIA. Yes. I was sick all week. I caught a little bit of a bug. I think I caught a classic textbook cold. And that laid me up for the last three days. Yes, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I was down for the count. Started coming out of it last night. Uh, I just, you know, self-medicated. Just laid low. Just let it pass. Took a lot of naps. Slept a lot. And, um, yeah, coughed up a lot of crap and blew up my nose so it was going to fall off. But I'm coming out of it and I'm feeling much better today. And, uh, yeah. So everything's okay. But anyway, <sighs> missed you guys. Yeah, I hate not being available to make content because I do enjoy this channel as much as most of you do as well. Um, I hope so anyways. <laughs> We're still growing, still getting more subscribers. So I do thank you guys for that. Um, so I wanted to, uh, well, we're burning a nice CT ham out here. Number zero clipper. This thing is a really nice burner. I bought this, I think, late 2020 or early 21. Anyways, I bought it off eBay. And it's just one of the best burners I have in the CT Ham Corral. Uh, it's, it has that really smooth, butter-like velvet action on the uh, regulator. It just, it just advances that wick up and down just flawlessly. It does have a very old wick in it, and that might be one of the reasons why, but anyway. It's nice, it's nice light, nice ambient light for our video here today. Anyways, don't burn it enough. Well, maybe because that has the older wick, I, I, I am more conservative when I burn that one. Anyway, let's get into it. So I wanted to do a departure from our typical lantern content. I wanted to share something that I am very much into right now. This is something great. So in my second to last video, I talked about acquiring a cast iron skillet. Yes. It is a uh, marked favorite piqua ware. And after doing a little, um, you know, a little uh, research on the old webs, this is what they call the smiley logo because it has a smile. And it's, uh, it's a beautiful skillet. It's a number nine B, and uh, it's a it's perfectly balanced. It's just a really nice skillet. It's very flat, perfect bottom, great cooking surface, nice and smooth. It's as non-stick as I want to get, and I've used it since I bought it. Yeah, so I been using this thing. Uh, as soon as I got to my sister-in-law's house, and that was a week ago last Saturday, Saturday before Christmas, Christmas Eve technically, uh, my wife and my sister-in-law went off to go do some uh, shopping for Christmas dinner and all that, so I stayed back and I uh, oiled it up a little bit and got it cleaned out just a, just a bit and uh, made myself some breakfast in it. Oh, wow. Oh wow, perfect. Yeah, flawless. This thing is a really nice skillet. And uh, so, I want to take good care of it. I am pretty good with cast iron, in, more or less. I, I, I keep it clean. I don't do anything that a lot of the experts tell us not to do with cast iron. Now, I would say that since I've been watching plenty of YouTube videos about the subject, there's a lot of different camps and theories and thoughts about care for one's cast iron. I kind of go with the Kent Rollins uh, camp. I don't use any soap, really. Um, I will use some very mild detergent uh, if necessary. Uh, and I usually, if there's anything that's really stuck on there, if anything gets really stuck onto the surface, haven't had that happen with this one, but the other one I have, yes. <laughs> Um, but what I'll do is I'll heat, heat up the skillet and then uh, to a certain temperature I don't know what temperature but hot <laughs> then I'll run it under hot water 
And so that will, that will sizzle and bubble up all the grime and the crap, the stuff that gets stuck to the surface. And it will just, it just comes right up. And then I wipe it out and then re-oil it. That's one way of cleaning that I like because it's not abrasive. Um, of course, people are apprehensive of introducing uh, extreme temperatures to cast iron. Now, since it's hot water, of course, it's not as hot as the skillet is, but it's not cold water. Now, that's where you, you really run the danger is if you're running cold water under a hot skillet, of course, your, your skillet will crack and fall apart. Um, it's dangerous. <laughs> Don't do it. But with hot water, I have pretty hot water at, at, in the house. It's definitely too hot to hold my hand underneath. I I've adjusted the water here, so it is pretty hot water. So that seems to work pretty good if I get anything stuck on it. But this thing is really good. Um, so I'll just wipe it out. I have a towel designated just for cast iron. That's right. And it's it's kind of grimy, but it, it's oiled and it just I'll just wipe it out. Wipe it out with the clean paper towel. And then I'll, I'll uh, warm it up a little bit on the stove and reapply some uh, olive oil. And I just, you know, wipe it all down and then wipe off the excess and then put back in the shelf, back in the cabinet and, until next time. But yeah, this thing is very smooth. It's a good skillet, nice and flat, no flaws. I'm very happy. So Piqua, favorite Piqua, uh, this skillet was manufactured probably towards... Eh, between 1930 and 35, I would say. Uh, so the logo was more block letters that are, were arched, um, I think. Yeah, uh, prior to that. So 1916 to 1935, these skills were made. Now, the company that made this goes back to the 1880s, but they didn't uh, start making skillets until the early 1900s, like 1916, from what I've read online. But uh, yeah, so this is pretty cool. It's a great skillet. I love it. And uh, it, it's, it, it makes great pancakes. Uh, and it's just a wonderful thing to have uh, one that's earlier. Because the other one I have is an unmarked Wagner, probably from the early 60s or late 50s. But uh, yeah, it's a good skillet too. But it's a little uneven. It does wobble just a little bit because, well, it did that when we got it. It was a gift from a friend. And it's a great skillet. It still cooks fine. Nothing wrong with it. It just wobbles a little bit, but this one's perfectly flat. Now, from what I've learned, it's always good to preheat your cast iron. So instead of just putting it on the stove and cranking the heat all the way up, from what I've learned, that's one surefire way of warping your cast iron. So you want to start off with a, a, a small heat, uh, like put on the burner and put it on low and let it slowly warm up. And now that takes time. Not everybody's patient enough for that. I, I get it. But you have to plan ahead sometimes with this stuff. Or you can put it in the oven and warm it up in the oven. And that's more, you know, it's not so much heat on one, one thing right in the center. And that will warp your cooking surface. That will warp the cast iron. So if you want to keep it in the oven and warm it up before you take it out. And of course, you always use an oven mitt. That way you might be better off in keeping a, a nice flat skillet still flat. But anyways, these things are pretty durable. Uh, I'm really, really looking forward to having it uh, for a long time and handing it down to somebody in the family at some point because a lot of people do do actually that. Now, I've, I still want to uh, acquire a nice Griswold or maybe a Wagner or something like that from maybe something 19th century. I wouldn't mind having something 19th century. Now, of course an early Griswold, or as they were called, Erie, at that time. They had the logo with the spider. Now, of course, those are very expensive and very rare. It would be fun to have one, but at the same time, I don't need one. <laughs> if I found one, I probably would sell it. But anyways, um, these are great, and I'm really happy to have this. I thought I'd share it here on the channel. Um, you know, I, I've been cooking breakfast in this most of the each morning and it's just a joy it, it's really cool easy to clean out and it's really the benefits of these things there 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 are health benefits to cast iron and you do get some of that that iron oxide into your food which is actually beneficial so i've i've looked it up and it is a thing but uh yeah 
This is a great skillet. And the number nines are quite common. They're, they're more common than the other sizes. Of course, the bigger you get, the harder they are to find and the more expensive you'll shell out for these. I got, I paid this for, I paid $50 for this. And I think that's a pretty good price. Um, my friend Josh out there in uh, Connecticut, he, he kind of got me started on cast iron. And uh, I've always kind of wanted to get into cast iron. But I was apprehensive because of price. But he, he gave me some uh, suggestions on how to find it for cheaper. Definitely they have a lot more out there than I find, find out here. Whenever I find cast iron out here, it's always expensive no matter where. Um, even at estate sales, it can be expensive because a lot of people will look for that Griswold logo or something like that. And it's like, ah, well, that's a hundred bucks. That's a hundred bucks. 125, whatever. So Griswold is definitely popular. It's very well known. Same with Wagner. Uh, just is. It's okay. But you can find it still. I, I'm going to keep my eyes peeled. But this was a, a good buy. And uh, I'm happy for now. I don't need to buy more cast iron because it does take up room. And I don't have a lot of room. And, well, how many skillets does one need? <laughs> Not that many, no. Uh, but anyways, if I attain my goal at some point in my life, I'll be happy. But I do want a cast iron cook stove. Yes, yes, I would love to have a cast iron range uh, at some point in time where I could use these. Because, I mean, with this era skillet or earlier with the heat ring... That's for a, a stove with a with pot lids. Yeah, the smooth cast iron cooking surface with the, the removable lids. That's what these are for. And that's what the numbers indicate for what burner, size of burner. So, yeah. But uh, it's an ideal size. It's lightweight. These are a lot lighter than a Lodge or a Griswold uh, or later run Griswolds or Wagners. But uh, yeah, it's nice and light. It's much lighter than most cast iron cookware that you can buy today, which is pretty much Lodge. That's the only, well, American made. I think Stargazer is American made as well, but it's very expensive. And to be fair, as good as it is, I don't know if I'm a big fan of their style because it looks modern. It looks kind of like a modern skill or a modern, modern frying pan that, you know, it just, it doesn't, it's quality stuff cooks great i know a lot of people like it but it's very expensive and it, well it's boutique it's boutique cast iron for 50 dollars, this thing looks like a early cast iron skillet and it suits me just fine and i'll take it on camping trips treat it right and i'm sure it will be a favorite that's right i love it i just i just do but anyways yeah okay that's all i'm going to say about that <laughs> well friends thanks again for stopping by uh thanks again for subscribing and liking the channel i do appreciate it and i will be coming back at you hopefully before the start of next week because well as i start to feel better i'll be able to make some more content because my schedule is changing as i i think i said in the start of the video my schedule is changing so I will be doing content on Thursdays now. That's right. So Wednesdays, I'll be working, but Thursdays will be my official day off each week. So I will uh, be able to do content on Thursdays. So yeah, we're gonna adapt. My wife actually graduated uh, the City College at PCC. So yay, congratulations to my wonderful wife for all the hard work that she did. And she graduated, and so she will not be doing a weekly class anymore on Wednesday. So now I can get back to my regular schedule at work, but I'm adjusting. Because I used to be off Mondays, but I'm gonna work Mondays through Wednesdays. So I think that'll be just fine. So Thursdays will be my content day and an occasional Saturday or Sunday to fill in the blanks. Okay, right on. All right, so I'll find something else to share for our next video on our next time together and until then thanks again and we'll see you again on the flip side all right bye bye